All right, good evening, everybody, whoever wants to watch this. This is the assembly portion of the Muyu Pai Chinese leather patcher that can be found on eBay. Here it is on a wooden base that I've constructed using the same two holes that come with it with just bolts going right through the board. One of the first things you'll want to do is get this thing mounted so it'll stay. There's some rubber pads underneath here to keep it from slipping around just to give it some padding and not to damage my work surface. And once it's put together, you will then be able to clamp it to the edge of your table so it won't dance around, move, and or jitter as you're putting it together. I'll show briefly how I put this one on. So I usually put one clamp on each of those little bits to keep it from dancing around. Another idea of assembly is make a small base or an actual table for this and have this mounted so it sticks out. So you could have it at the end of the workbench sticking out so that you can work your material off the end of this. The reason why this machine is so nice compared to some of the other ones is it has a very small footprint. So you can get inside of your pieces. This assembly video is going to be specifically for getting the crank wheel onto the assembly and getting it to move. This is the main crankshaft. This moves the front and the back mechanism. This is the piece that moves the needle up and down. This will rotate the bobbin and the back arms then move the foot to go back and forth. Your main wheel has two grooves in it, one in the center, one on the outside, and a cam with a slight indentation. That indentation has to go over this part of it. And if I turn the cam, the axle, there's a small screw sticking out. Let's see if I can get in there nicely. So that is the area that needs to be aligned with the inside of that hand crack. Second part, you'll also see that there's a lot of white stuff on mine. I've actually used white silicone grease to get the insides and those ball bearings to have a little bit of uh, grease in them because they're open uh, ball bearings. So in order to keep them lubricated, I've used white grease or axle grease to get in there. And I use some oil on the inside. So what we intend to do is get this mounted on there. And the reason the board is elevated is so that the wheel doesn't hit. You want to put it over the end of this, you want to find where the little notch is on the back, and you'll slide it in until you can get it into that notch. Now here's the part that's tricky is, the bottom cam for the bobbin goes on the inside wheel and the other one goes on the outer. So this has to be moved, and you'll just rotate them and press them in until you get all the pieces to go into their respective grooves and you'll find that the ball bearings do go into the groove almost completely. You'll use the provided nut that goes into it onto the face. It does not come with a pressure washer uh, or a split washer which might be a good idea since it does suffer vibration but since this isn't something that's going to be rotating quickly, it's more of just a hand cranking. I use an adjustable wrench to get it on there and give it a nice tightening. Once that's on there, that's pretty much it. You've assembled your hand crank. So this will allow it to move up and down. As you can hear, that sounds very good, very smooth in its operation, a nice clunk clunk chiclink as it moves. And the back as it rotates. So one is turning one side, one is activating the other lever and pushing the foot and moving. In the next video, I'll show some of the other aspects and the oiling points.